Hello, friends. Welcome again to another exciting Bible study, God's Word Alive. You know, I decided to just, just pull out all the firepower tonight. I've got two of the most fired up ladies I know sitting on either side of me, Shirley and Mary Lee. These ladies, these young ladies love Jesus with all their heart. And, you know, tonight we wanted to talk about, um, well, our commission to prepare the world for Jesus Christ in return. And I was talking a little bit before we started here. I said, you know, like for yesterday, for the first time ever, it was announced that that there's less people that are that are going to that, that basically even saw their self Christian are going to church. Now think about that. Less people than ever are here in the United States anywhere claim to be Christians. Now why in the world? I'm also part of a of a, a group that prays every day throughout North America, and we pray for other countries. And it is so shocking at the amount, at the low percentage of people that call themselves Christians in these other countries. And we know that Jesus is coming soon. So what's going on? Um, and I think the only answer to this is that that people have not been painted a correct picture of who God is. They, they just had an incorrect picture. The, de the devil somehow or another has disillusioned people into thinking and making God out to be some kind of cruel taskmaster. If you don't do this and you don't do that, you're going to burn, burn, burn. And, and so people, instead of, instead of running to God, they're running from God. So we got to give God a fair shake tonight, ladies. We got to do that. And I know both of y'all got a very clear picture of Jesus because I've talked to you too much about it. Not only that, I watched you both in your day to day lives. And, and so I think that's what people need. So tonight, we're going to study this really important topic of, of, of a clear picture of who Jesus is. And I think we're going to find out that God, by his very nature, is a giving God, a loving God. And we're going to look at that. And so what we need is we need your help. Uh, we need your help. Would you please, uh, you can, uh, through the Facebook, uh, you can send in comments through Facebook. If you would rather, you can text your comments in to 479-220-7107. If you, if you prefer not to use the Facebook comments, you can text your comments in to 479-220-7107. Now, it will be a lot better Bible study when we got your help because we're all a team for Jesus here. We got to do this for Jesus tonight, okay? Amen. So, Shirley, I'm going to ask you, would you have a prayer for us and we could kind of get kick started? Yes. Okay. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, ask your presence here tonight as we talk about how we can be like you and show it to our neighbors, people we pass during the day, people we work with, even in our homes. We just ask that you will be with us and, and put the words in our mouth and what we need to say. We thank you and love you. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, let's dig in here. I want to start with a scripture in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18 through 20. Now, we all recognize this. This is our great commission that Jesus has given each one of us here. Uh, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. And uh, Mary Lee, would you like to read that for us? Just uh, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay, thank you, Mary Lee. That you know that scripture right there tells us some pretty important things here. First off, when we go when we go for God, we go with God. Um, and you know how can we how can we paint to the world a clear picture of who God is? How can we do that? What in in that context there? Uh, in, in that context, you know how do we prepare the world for His soon return? What's what's your thoughts on that? Well, if we see a need and we show them love and help them yeah. when they're hurting. Mm -hmm. you know. I think that's right, Mary Lee. Yeah. I think people, um, people, and I've heard this saying, and y'all probably heard it too, people are not impressed about how much you know till they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. uh, that, to me, you know, that, 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 that kind of rings in my ear. And I think, 
you know, we talked about for some reason or other, there's a coldness toward Christianity. I think people are tired of just being preached to. I think they're they're tired. They they uh, and I, I had a friend of mine uh, that that I had to talk to one time. She really meant well. She she was uh, she would explain to all the young ladies that that uh, that uh, they they wouldn't dress properly or or they or that was her big hang up. She didn't write maybe how they dressed or whatever like that. And I said and I told her and because she was a friend of mine, I knew she meant well. And I told her I said you know I said I said if 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 those young ladies know that you really really care about them you can tell them things like this but if they don't know you know what it's going to do it's just going to come across condemning so i think little things like this you know really make a difference i think it's important to just to kind of mingle with people and uh and, and let them know that you care about them isn't that kind of what jesus did yeah and you know rick i kind of thought about that like i kind of thought about it wherever i'm at in the during the day. I think of myself at work and how can I portray a picture of Jesus? And, you know, I came up with the idea of, you know, there's so many hurts at work. There's so many needs at work. And I'm not talking about patients. I'm talking about the people I work with. And, you know, I feel like I want to be approachable. I want them to feel like they can come and talk to me or if they're sad or they can cry in front of me and it's okay. And, you know, I always tell them I'm praying for them. And I truly am. Yeah. I, I, I truly put them in my prayers. Um, but I want to be approachable, but I just, I want to be a faithful worker at work and I want them to know that, you know, and I don't want to be scared to mention Jesus' name, that I might offend somebody. I don't always you know, say, oh, Jesus will help you through that. But I just want them to know that, you know, they, that I do love Jesus. And, yeah. you know, and, and they all know that I go to church on Saturday and that's my special day. Um, and so I think about showing a picture of Jesus at work. Um, and then I think about it at home. And I think sometimes, you know, I think that we kind of put that to the side but I really feel like we, we need to show a picture of Jesus when we're in our homes. Mm -hmm. And yes. I've, I thought about this for a long time, but there's one thing that is, um, I always think that I need to have a smile on my face. I need to be happy, you know, no matter what, even when my kids are there, if it's just me and Jay, I mean, I need to be happy and not be, you know, a Debbie Downer and not be happy and, and be positive. I think that's really important in our homes. But I always think about, Food, food's a really important thing in my home. I think it's yeah. important mine, in mine everybody's too, home. <laughs> mine too. But Marilee's taught me one thing, and Marilee's always taught me about making a sandwich for Bob. And when she makes that sandwich for Bob, she Bob always tells her to make it with love. And that means that you cut it on a diagonal, and you put all the nice little things, and you make it very presentable and loving. Oh, Bob's watching. <laughs> yeah, he's spoiled. No. <laughs> but you know, sometimes that makes... You know, and I, and I don't always make a plate for Jay, but sometimes we we just have our food out on the counter, and then and lately I have been I'll make a plate for him, and especially when I know he's really tired, and I'll make a plate for him, and yes. it does put a smile on his yeah. face. I think that I, I think about this verse that I just came across when I was listening to a sermon recently. It was Matthew five forty one, and it says, "If a soldier demands that you carry his gear a mile, carry it two miles." So sometimes I feel like we need to go the extra mile. I think you've yeah. done that a lot, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, not always. Yeah. Well, that's so good what you're saying here. And, 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 you know, we're called, the Bible says we are his ambassadors. We represent to the world what, what being a child of God. Be, we, we are Christians. We represent God here on this earth. So you're right. When when we walk around like this and and bah humbug and in a negative attitude, then what we're doing, we're painting a picture of what it means to be a Christian. So God, Jesus told us. We just got through reading it here. He says, He said, "Go therefore and uh, and He says, and, and all authority, all power. He's going. To, if you make the choice to do this, He's going to give you the the power. He's going to empower you to do this. Teach you." Teach them to observe things that, that, that I have taught. In other words, not just know about it, but actually live it out. And I think that's a 
the biggie to me is as Christians, if we allow God, because Jesus is going to be there for us, He's going to empower us. If we allow Him, He will live in us in such a way that you can't smile, that you can't cut that 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 uh, sandwich in a certain way for Bob, you know, because because you want to live it at home. You don't want to fake it. I mean, you, right. you, you want to live it because exactly. you want to do it at home. You want to do it when you're at work. I know Cindy. Cindy has, has it, when she goes to work, so I, I, there is ladies that have come up to her and she said, they say, how can you be this happy all the time? Because she, my wife, Cindy, she's, she's, what you see on the outside, she's like that on the inside too. I mean, she's like that at home. Uh, she's like that at work. And, and it's because Jesus gives you the power to do that. He does. He does. So, yeah, I love that. That's a perfect, good thought. So, well, the other part I wanted to say one more thing is that, yeah. about this, is that I think about the general public when I'm out in the general public. Well, that puts me into Walmart, is when I always think about the general public. <laughs> I'm in Walmart. And, you know, people are coming and going. And um, I always think be kind, be kind, be kind, be courteous. You know, if somebody's in a rush and they get cut in front of you and they have to be there, let them cut in front of you. Let them be worth. I almost say, if people are rude, just allow that. Because you, I just read something recently in a book called Grieving, um, Grief Recovery. And you know, it was about a woman who's been just upset and has never allowed her tears to flow for eight years after her daughter died and when she was 11. And so she's bottled that up mm. and never allowed that. Now, can you imagine that person in Walmart that you pass by? <laughs> you know, she's got a burden in her heart. And I think there's a lot of people who you don't know what's going on. Maybe they're, you know, in a bad relationship. Maybe their kid, they don't have a good relationship with their kids. You know, they've got a bad job or, you know, somebody was really, up, you know, they probably got fired that day. But, you know, it comes out in a different way and they're rude and then you want to react to that and i think mm -hmm. to my mind don't react do not react to people smile do whatever that you know a lot it's okay don't react to that react, you know and i just think in in general we just need to i put down be kind be kind be kind you know we just need to remind ourselves just to be kind yeah and it's okay and to show in a way just show you know don't react to that because i don't feel like jesus did when you read about him? Yep. My nature is to be impatient, but the more I study and have my devotions in the morning, I go through my day better yes. without reacting. But my, yeah. you You're, know, some people are just more bent to be patient and loving, yeah. but I have to take that time or I do too, it doesn't Mary always Lee. come out. <laughs> yeah, I do too. You know, you brought up a really good point, Mary Lee, about, about your, you, normally, you, you know, we are, let's just, Let's just be honest about. It. I, I'm I'm a very impatient person. Uh, I'm very quick to respond in maybe even a negative way. But when I spend time with Jesus yeah. in the morning, when Amen. I spend time with Him, uh, they, the the scripture says, "By beholding, right. we are changed." Mm -hmm. And so, as you spend time with Jesus and you learn more about Him, and surely that's exactly where you got that from. You know how to be courteous, kind, and not respond like the world would respond. You've learned that through spending time with Jesus, through seeking Him in His Word, and you go, well, that's what Jesus did. That's how He responded. And this is exactly how we're going to let the world know that there really is a God. One of my favorite scriptures is John 3.16. I don't even think we've got to go there. We all know it. Mm -hmm. because, but it kind of just, it just kind of centers. This is who God is. He's a giver. For God so loved the world that He gave. And He just didn't give any old thing. He gave it all. Yeah. He emptied heaven. He emptied heaven for each one of us. That's who God is. He, he emptied heaven. So God is a giving God. And so how do, we, how do we let the world know that God is a loving God? How do we let the world know that God cares about us? And exactly what, it's exactly what the both of you are saying here. Because yeah. they probably, a lot of them, have not seen it modeled no. in their home. And so they get a picture of what they've seen modeled. That's right. Yeah. So where does it start at? It starts with us. And we start, we model it, and we've already, Jesus says, and lo, I'm with you always. That was our opening scripture there. When you do that, Mary Lee, he, Jesus is going to empower you to do it. You've just got to make that decision to do it. 
and, and he's going to use you. So um, I, I want to think about this, how, how we can, can let the world know. And I've got a scripture in Romans 2.4. Romans 2.4. Let's look at Romans 2.4. As a matter of fact, Mary Lee, if you look at Romans 2.4, and surely if you look at 2 Corinthians 5.14, and I want to look at these two verses here, and I've got another that, that I might read later, but um, so you, you, you got Romans, Rom, Romans 2.4. Yeah. Listen to these words right here. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads, leadeth thee to repentance. Yeah. So, what's going to lead people to turn from the way that they're living their life right now? When they realize how good God when is. When they realize how good He is. Now, that, that scripture right there needs to ring in our ears a lot more than what it does probably. Because, I'll be honest, on the, on the me, I'm thinking the way me, to make people turn from their ways is by telling them, hey, you're, 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 you, need, you need to watch how you're living. That's not really right. And, you know, I preach to them about this or preach to them about that. But that's not what the Bible says here. The Bible says it's the goodness of God. It's when we reveal the goodness of God to somebody, that's what's going to talk, encourage them to turn from the way that they're living and turn to God. Instead of running from God, they're going to run to God when they realize you know how good he is and how much he loves him. So this is all this is all important in it. it so Second um, Corinthians five fourteen. It says, "Whatever we do, it is because Christ's love controls us, and since we believe that Christ died for everyone, mm -hmm. we also believe that we we have all died to the old life we used to live." Okay, all right. Second uh, Second Corinthians five fourteen. It it. The love of God compels us. It's the love of God. So it's the goodness of God that leads people to repent and turn to God. It's the love of God. When we reveal the love of God, that's what that's what draws people. That's what draws people to Him. And so that's what we've got to do. We've got to. It's and and so how would we apply this to our day to day lives? I mean, now I've know I've heard stories about you, both of you ladies. How, you know, you go on these long rides and you come back with all kind of stories, <laughs> either about how somebody has, has been good to you or, 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 or loved on you and you, shocked you. Can, maybe y'all were a guy in the bind or maybe where y'all turned the table and were good for somebody else. So share, share one or two or three of those stories. Well, um, we were uh, coming from Colorado Springs and we, uh, we made it as far as Canyon City. And I decided I couldn't go any further. So some gracious what lady. What was wrong? Altitude. I, I just didn't feel good with the altitude. And it, we had already ridden 60 miles. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to get it. That's it what I wanted everybody to know. first day of riding for this trip. Yeah. How many miles? 60 already. Did you say 6 or 60? 60. 60 miles. Okay, that's what I wanted to highlight yeah. there. i have been dead. Yeah. I, would have, I would have said, call the ambulance. Yes. <laughs> so, so you were in a desperate situation. Yeah, you were hurting. I thought I, we were at a convenience store. I thought I'm yeah. just going to ask a lady if she would take me. It was only 25 miles to the next stop where uh -huh. we were going to stop for the night. And she was gracious and took us. And... um. When we got to the little camp where I was at, I asked her, I said, would you go back and just check on my people? Uh -huh. I said, I don't know how they're doing because I took my husband's bags, but all the rest of them had their bags. Yeah. So she said she would. And she came back again with everybody else's bags. I mean, she oh, went back down, she went back and gathered their out. bags. Yeah. Well, then the night got wearing out and the only place to eat was like a little bar and grill and the restaurant closed at eight o'clock. So I finally got cell service to them, and they said, yes, they were hungry and uh -huh. thirsty. And, and so they had veggie burgers. Yes. <laughs> they did. So I ordered the food. Yeah. And, um, but it's, it's just getting late now. And I said, so my husband called me. He goes, Marilee, is there anyone that could come get us? So I Boy, asked that, the lady. For Bob to, yeah, to, to admit, to <laughs> it must have been really bad. Yeah. So the <laughs> owner of this little bar, and it was a woman, and yeah. she had a pickup. They all had pickup trucks. And um, she said, yes, yeah, she'd be glad to. And they yeah. came in so thirsty and so hungry yes. and worn out. Yes. But she was so gracious, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. to 
Yeah, I found a lot of gracious people. Yes, yeah. praise the Lord. And surely, I'm sure has more yeah. stories of yeah. graciousness. So, so in other words, you here, you you are in a desperate situation. Yes. And, and and somebody was the hands and feet of Jesus exactly. to you. And exactly. it meant a lot to you. A lot. Yes, that's right. That's real world stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was we felt like the Lord was actually, I mean, we knew God was taking care of us. I, I because this that. was like, this was unbelievable. And we it was, when we got, when we got up there. Dehydrated, probably crowned. It was dark yeah. when we got and up there. The, the places were all grown in with grass. They, uh, if they had came at night, they would not have found where we were to stay. It was just a jungle. Yeah, nothing yeah. to eat either. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no food or water. Yeah. Or, and and you'd yeah. already run out of water? Y'all run out of water? We were low. We yeah. were very low. On water. Okay, all right, uh -huh. wow. Yeah, okay. and it was a hot day. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you have been on the receiving yeah. end of this yes. also. Yeah, so it kind of reminds me of the story. There's a story in the Bible. Uh, let's see where that's at. It's in, it's in Luke chapter... Uh, where do I got it right here? Luke chapter 10. Is that where it's at? It's um, Luke chapter, Luke chapter, uh, where is it? At? Help me, Lord. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. Let's go there and look at, at this uh, story. I think everybody's familiar with this. Jesus tells a story here uh, uh, about a, the good, a good Samaritan. Luke chapter 10. Would you read that, Shirley? Verse 25 through 37. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? And the man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. And, and, then, and okay. then it goes on. Yeah. Yes. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied with an illustration. A Jewish man was traveling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes and money and beat him up, and they left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a Jewish priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road, and he passed him by. A temple assistant walked over, and he looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised, despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt deep pity. Kneeling beside him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with medicine and bandaged them, and then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. And the next day he handed the innkeeper two pieces of silver and took, told him to take care of the man. If his bill runs higher than that, he said, I'll pay the difference the next time I, come, I am here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits? Jesus asked. And the man replied, the one who showed him mercy. And then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Okay. All right. Now, let's look at this. You know, Jesus came to show us, to give us a true picture of who God really was. Uh, God, uh, when by the time Jesus come, God had really gotten a bad rap because the religious order at the time had made God out to be a bunch of rules and regulations, lifeless forms in religion that that really that 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 was more binding than healing, really in a, in a way. And Jesus came to show him that he this is this story that he gives us right here is really to illustrate what true religion is all about. So what is, out of this little story right here, what would you say true religion really is? What's your thoughts on that? I would say that when you see a huge need, that you just answer that and is, I Without mean... Without being judgmental. Yes. Of, yeah. Whatever their position in life is, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I see one thing that jumps out to me here in this story is that unless there's some type of self-sacrifice, when we when we when we see Jesus here, uh, when we see Jesus gay, it's about giving. It's about giving to others. It's about giving your life. Uh, real Christianity is about a self-sacrifice and love, sacrificing your your time. I mean, those people that helped y'all out, that was yeah. a sacrifice. It for was. the lady that carried you up the hill, yeah. for the lady that carried the spot, that was that was Jesus in action. Yeah. That he's saying right here, this is what real Christianity is 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 all about right here. You know, people, there are people out there. Now, and let's just bring this back to twenty twenty one. 
we might not see somebody. I mean, not everybody gets, not everybody goes on these 60 mile bike yeah. rides, ladies. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know, your husband's, <laughs> I want to go bike riding with your husband's, and I've already talked to him, but I want to try about a 10 mile, you know, to, to, but no. so let's bring this to, to something that a little bit closer to home that more of a normal person might do. <laughs> and, uh, uh, let, let, you know, one of the things that, that knocks people down more than anything in the world is sin. Do you know that? There's so many people that are beat up and discouraged and, and laying by the wayside of life that are beat up because maybe some bad choices they made in their life. Maybe they didn't have a, uh, somebody to carry them to church when they was young and, and give them good values. Or, or maybe they did and they just made bad choices. But there's people on, on the, 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 the sidelines of life, you know, that are beat up and discouraged. You know, we, we, what, I get out of this message here is we don't need to just walk by them in life. All they might need is the encouraging word. All they might need is, is, is someone telling them, you know what? You can make it brother. You can make it sister. You know, uh, maybe they made some bad choices and you can go up and say, you know what? God can take everything that you've done and turn it into good. Romans eight twenty eight says that, that he can take your mess and, and, and turn it into good. He can, he can do that. So there's a lot of people out there that just need encouraging words. And I'm, I'm sure that, uh, that, that you probably both have stories about that. I know one story that I heard about when y'all were uh, on some, this, uh, like a missionary uh, pathway, pathway to help. Yeah. yeah. And some of the ways that you helped some of the people out there. Tell me about the encouraging story about the guy that was, that, that was going on a job interview. Okay. Um, he was in a halfway house. So I think he had been incarcerated probably in um, he was older, and his hair was real long and gray and long yeah. beard and everything. And uh, They also provided suits and shirts there, too, right next to where we cut their hair. And, you know, he would just close his eyes when I would cut his hair, and I gave him a nice haircut and cleaned his beard up. Yeah. And, you know, he just soaked it all in, and he was so happy because he had a job interview the next day. Right. And he went right over and got a new suit. And a new shirt and a fresh haircut. And yeah. He was very happy. Yeah. Very now, happy. Think about that. Think about what kind of impact that that just a good deed uh, did for this guy. I yes. mean, how, his self-esteem. And, the, and, and um, you know, I don't think they get much human touch. Yeah. And uh, just to have somebody touch them. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I think it was very comforting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. It was, Mary Lee. I can assure you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because because I mean you're right. The devil is doing anything he can to try to destroy, to take hope out of people's lives. Yeah. He he likes to 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 knock them down to where they have no self esteem, no yeah. self worth. And when we come along beside these people like this, and we and we treat them like they're like they're one of us, yeah. you know, like they're human, like they like uh, like. The Good Samaritan did for for this guy here, and he sh actually showed his he cared and he showed love and and he and he put it in action and and that that, that had a big impact I'm sure on the Good Samaritan, but uh, on the Good Samaritan yes because you got a blessing out of it just like he did, but also on the person that you were you were helping out. Yeah. So praise God. So, any other stories from Pathway to Health? Well, there was just so many. Uh so many. The line was forever long, but they all seemed to appreciate it. Yeah. Tell they us what. Happy. Tell me about Pathways Health. What I know a little bit about it, but I'm sure our audience don't know much about it at all. What What is that? How's that work? They right. basically set up a huge, like a clinic, um, that you can go through and. Boy, I'm have to think back. I, don't I was yeah. part of the triage, so uh -huh. I I would triage. And uh, take vital signs, but kind of hear what their wants were, and then you would be able. Then they would go and go to that area. Like if you wanted some teeth work done, so they had dentists there. You yeah. wanted eyes, they would yep. check your eyes. Um, and this was all for glaucoma. free. This for people yes. who couldn't normally afford they these kind of things. They had surgeries. They had yeah. like they had a connection with the hospital. Yes, uh -huh. and they would do like some hernias. Yeah. And some yes, things. they could do some repair like that. Was this in San Antonio or yes, Houston? Yes, this one was in San Antonio. Okay, that we they, what I know about this is that is that uh, 
the the it's it, a group of people will put together like uh, like Shirley saying here they'll go to a big city and they will offer and they'll they'll advertise it to all the those out there that can't afford it these kind of health care uh pro- they provide this and they provide that and all these people lined up i've heard just like lines yeah in yeah Antonio yeah something. coming to over these 6, events 000, here I think. yeah it oh, was yeah over uh-huh. six thousand yeah yeah that would come to these events and they would get this this free care health care yeah. and everything so it means a lot to them and so, a makeover and a, and a makeover <laughs> hey i wonder if okay, the guy they got a job up. They like, I hope so. I yeah. don't know. Okay. Well, yeah. see, that that to me is what it's all about. And that's what Christ did. When we look at when we look back at the life of Christ, what Christ did, you know, he could have he could have busted into in, into the world here, uh, you know, in a lot different way than what he did, but he came as a servant. You notice that? Yes. He he says, I, I didn't come to serve. I come needs. to ministry. Before he come to meet their preached. needs. Yeah. And, yeah. and so Christ's way of witnessing to people is he would mingle with people. He would mingle with them and let them know that he cared about them. He would meet their needs. Yeah. Uh, Cindy and I were talking uh, this past Sabbath. You know, if 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 someone is starving, if they've not had any real food in 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 a, in, in a week, you know, uh, just just scraps here and there. If if you if you if you really if you really um, if, before they're going to listen to you about if you want to preach to them or anything mm-hmm. like that, you need to fill their stomach first. Yes. And I think that's what I see Jesus did uh, doing. So maybe one of the ways that we can let the world know that there's a God, instead of doing so much sermonizing and preaching to them, maybe we can just reveal the love of God to them. Maybe just mingling with them, uh, offering to, to do something nice for them. You know, like carry them some water, yeah. <laughs> uh, or, or you know, or cut their hair, or, or, or provide some kind of medical attention or something. Um, there's a there's a world that's hurting out there, and so you can't outgive God. Uh, read. Who would like to read Luke chapter six, verse thirty-eight? Luke chapter six and verse thirty-eight. Now this is now this is is there a benefit? Is there a benefit for being the hands and feet of Jesus? Is it because God's God's very nature? We've already looked at this. God's very nature is giving. He's a giving God, and so. Well, I think mm-hmm. from a book I've read, it, we work out our own salvation yes. when we're giving to other people. I love that, Mary Lee. Yeah, the best way to work out our own salvation is by 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 aggressively seeking the salvation and the good of yeah. others. But for the good of others. That's right. So true. I think that's part of our salvation. Yeah. Because we're so inward focused. Naturally, you know, we are selfish. Yeah. You know that? Oh, so yeah. so God is has given us these commands and these encouragements to give. So Shirley, would you read Luke chapter six and verse thirty eight? If you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure. Press down, shaken together to make room for more, and running over. Whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. Okay. So here, here God is. He's telling us something here. You know, if you want to live a blessed life, do you want to be blessed? Do you want to have things overflowing? Give back. Give back. You know, uh, I think one of the fundamental principles of the Bible is blessed are those that give. That is, that's a fundamental yes. teaching of the Bible. Uh, and uh, you know, I, have y'all did you noticed that about anybody? Um, like for instance, the the usually the happiest person in the crowd is the one that's giving to others. Yeah. You ever notice that? Mm-hmm. Now I kind of noticed that about the two of you, and that's one of the reasons I asked you on here today. But of course, now I'm going to tell you something about these two girls. They don't like to toot their own horn. So I'm not going to ask them to toot their own horn. I'm going to toot it for them. They're all about giving to others and, and, and giving their life to helping others and everything. And so, but but is that a blessing? Why do you do that? Is that a blessing to you? I mean, trying to help other people out? Is it? I, I always think that, you know, I like to cook and I like to get, provide food give food to others. I mean, mm-hmm. make a pie for them, make some cookies. But I just love to see that smile on their face. That's right. And, um, and you know, to take meals to people who, you know, have 
been in the hospital yes. or yes you know if she can't won't get around to her own torn but she has in the years i've known her you couldn't count the amount of food she's brought to people. And I know this. I know these kind of things. And she's yeah. a good cook. Yeah. She is. Now, that's not really one of my gifts. But <laughs> it is one of hers. And she has yes. done a lot of that. Yeah. So, I mean, is it? it's hard to explain this, but there is just a inner peace of when you do stuff like that. There is. Uh, I, I've noticed this in crowds. As a pastor, I've noticed this. That usually the happiest person is the one that never thinks of their self. They're always putting other people first. That I've just they just notice that, and I and I've told people this: the best medicine, if you're if you're fighting depression or if you're going through a hard time or something like that, the best thing you can do is look for someone that's going through a more difficult time, a harder time than you, and 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 just and serve them. And there's just a blessing about doing that in it. So, blessing. yeah, mm-hmm. so he says, he, this is what Jesus says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you will use, it will be measured back to you. You just, God is so good and you, you just, you just can't out give God is right. what, is what it's saying here. And there's, there's several ways to give. I mean, you don't have to always do it with food or you don't have to do it with money. Um, you know, there's giving your time. And there's a verse here in the Bible that I came across, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. Uh And it says, make up your own mind how you should give. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Uh God loves the one who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Oh, I love that. Where's that at? In 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. 2 Corinthians 9. So, you know, I said, you know, give your time and he will multiply it. You always think, oh, I don't have enough time. Oh, I don't, I'm just sure. But you know, when you take that time out and you you go and give that time, you go, wow, it's just like, I really didn't miss that time. Absolutely. It multiplies it. How about yeah. your money? There's many things that we can give as far as our money. But, you know, if you give it to, give it when you're, you know, God asks you to, to give it. And I always say, I've. I've got to talk to God every day because I got to know what his plan is. He's going I, I, to, he's going to tell me. And there's times when I think, why would I want to do that? Or why would I want to go there? Or, you know, why do I, you know, and then I, if I, I got to heed that call, I got to listen and I got to know when he's going to talk to me and know that voice. So, you know, I'll put in that plug for spending time with him every morning. Absolutely. Sure. And then give your talent He'll multiply it. We all have different talents. We all have different things that we can do. And, you know, use that talent and he will multiply that and then give your energy. Even though we feel like we're on our last leg, God will provide that energy for us to do what we need to do. Yeah. Well, like Shirley, I know you are a very busy person. You're a restaurant nurse. You work in the surgery department. You're busy, busy, busy. But what I've heard you saying is the very teaching of the Bible. If you will give God your time, if you'll give Him, you know, seek Him first, mm-hmm. He will bless your time that you have remaining exponentially. He'll make your time stretch. If you give to others, He says, I'll give you back. You can't outgive God. That's beautiful. That is so true. So, that, that's a, you know, that reminds me of Malachi chapter, Mal, uh, yeah, Malachi chapter 3. And verse, uh, listen, it's right here, 10. This is the very same thing you just got through saying, Shirley. That's the reason I asked you. I said, where'd you get that at? Uh, Malachi chapter 3, three, verse 10 says, Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now and this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there be not room enough to receive it. He's saying the very same thing here. That mm-hmm. It's just, it's the very nature of God. Uh, and he and, and if we are God's children, we're going to be that like, way too. So here he's talking about tithes, but uh, but just in the verses before he talked about tithes and offerings. And I want you to know, money and time are the same thing. You can give your time and you can give your money. You know he's talking about money right here, but just like you said, time is important. I think probably the most selfish thing we can be is selfish with our time. Yeah. But if we give time. 
if we give time back, if we give time to others, if we sacrifice our time for others, God is saying, I will bless you. And not only will I bless you, but I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so big that you can't take it all in. And so that's the reason that those people out there that you see always about helping others, always about carrying food to those that are sick or lost loved ones, those that are all out there trying to help people, you know, and, and, and when they're going through a hard time and do something for them, those are the happiest people. They're most complete. And, God, and, and Jesus is with them. He says, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to empower you when you do things like this. So incredible. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful story here. Um, I think in, in our... Now, I want to remind anybody out there, now maybe somebody sent us in something here. Um, okay, this is a story from Faith, and I want to share it. Um, Praise God, the Holy Spirit called out my name to my dad when I was about four years old. I was... Wow, listen to this story here. I was drowning at Lake Travis, Texas, I had already breathed in water. Dad heard a still small voice saying, where's your daughter? Uh, I was barely conscious, uh, thought his hands was God's or an angel. I was saved to live his, uh, for his purpose. Wow. Mm-hmm. Faith, praise God. Uh, thank you for sharing that powerful testimony. I think, Faith, you, you, you're just bringing something and driving it home here that I hope that we can all realize that that God wants to use each one of us. He's got a life plan for each one of us. He cares about us. He loves us. And He's called and chosen us to be His hands and feet here in these very final hours of earth's history. Uh, Thank you for sharing that, Faith. Now, the story I'd like to, to end with here is found in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. Um, here Jesus is, and I want to kind of paint the, the backdrop here. Jesus is about ready to go to the cross. And uh, he, he's to make the huge sacrifice. We've got Easter coming up. And, and I think everybody can really relate to that now. Uh, the, the huge sacrifice that God made for us so that, 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 we, can, that we can live. Um, and, and here Jesus was... Was if you know if you were about to go to the cross and 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 everything, your life stories or teachings would have to be very important, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, he he Matthew twenty four Jesus had talked about the condition of the world right before he come, and then in Matthew chapter twenty five he talks about the conditions of those that are going to represent him. Uh, he talks about, you know, in Matthew 25, at the beginning, he talks about the ten virgins. We know that, that um, we know there was ten virgins, and we know that five of those ten virgins did not have oil in their lamp. And Jesus told them, when they come to him, he says, I didn't know you. You know, I don't even know you. And, and, and what, that was so foreign to even Jesus, and I'm sure it hurt him have to say that, but they were totally shocked because they thought, they thought that they were right with God. Right. They really thought they were. They, 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 they knew all about God, but apparently they didn't know Him because He says, I didn't know you. And then He tells a story about the talents, uh, that where he, we talked about talents a while ago, Shirley, about using your talents to serve others. And these are ways that you can tell. It's a litmus test that you can tell that you really are a, a true... Christian, and, and you have Christ living in you, you're going to use your talents not only for your own selfish reasons, but you're going to use them to help other people like we've been talking about and everything. And then he tells a story about the sheep and the goats. And I want us, with that backdrop and context, let's, let's read this here. So Shirley, would you like to read that? Uh, we're going to read tw- uh, 31 through 40 here. 31 through 40. But when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit upon His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in His presence, and He will separate them as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at His right hand and the goats at His left. And then the King will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. 
I was naked, and you gave me clothing, and I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then those righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will tell them, I assure you, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Okay. So uh, the, the scripture that really jumps out to me is when Jesus says, if you've done it to one of the least of these, you've done it to me. So what's this, what's this, uh, what's this story telling you? What do you get out of this story? There's no one unworthy of of our love or Christ's love, you know. Mm-hmm. He he is looking for everyone. We judge people, but he does not judge like we do. He loves everybody, don't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he does. And and uh, uh, he seems to have a really tender heart for the hurting and less fortunate. You mm-hmm. see that. Uh, he's not, Jesus don't judge by color or caste or, yeah. or social status or anything like that. Uh, in fact, he seems like he kind of leans to those yeah. that are, that are less fortunate. Um, Shirley, any thoughts that you have on this? Well, I think we do a lot of judging. We do. And, you know, we look and we just say it's a hopeless case or how can we help, you know, all those out there. I know that when we, we just took a trip to Salt Lake City and we could not believe the amount of homeless that were out there, living in tents. And it was pretty cool. It was snowing, actually. actually one day it snowed the whole day that we were there. And we couldn't, we wondered where all these people were, but they would be in tents or they'd be up against a building. And uh, yeah, I, it's just like, it was so overwhelming. And we, we don't understand what, how this town or the city takes care of all these people that are homeless. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, it's it's it almost seems overwhelming, but I, I feel like I, I feel like God will put people in front of you. He'll give you that chance, and we need to listen to that voice that tells us what we need to do. Amen, Shirley. I really, I really, truly feel that way. I feel like you know, there's, um, yeah, we were in the restaurant there eating some Indian food, and there was uh, a gentleman came in, and he had like five coats on, <laughs> and he kept taking them off. And he had, you know, like duct tape around, you know, a couple of bags and everything. And, and uh, Jay went out and talked to the, some people. There was a, not very many people in this restaurant, but he went and talked to them. And they said, well, you know, he wanted to come in here and just um, get away from the cold. Sure. And uh, so Jay went, we went, he went over and talked to him. He says, would you like some food to eat? And he goes, I would love that. Praise and God. He was just going to come in there and get warm. And... He says, go up there and order whatever you like. Yeah. You know, go ahead and order something. And so, but it it just seems like, how can you just do this one when there's so many, that was the only one that was in the restaurant, but how could you, there's so many people out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, such a good point there, Shirley. This this story here uh, about the sheep and the goats, it tells us that, now Jesus is telling us, when when I come back, when when the Son of Man comes back, we're going, to, we're going to have two classes of people. Two classes of people. The, those that, those that, that are saved and those that are going to be lost. Mm-hmm. And, he, and those that are going to be sheep and those that are going to be goats. Very clearly, he, he says that. And, and one of the things, and it's going to be determined, he says, but what, but what they have done or they've neglected to do for him in the presence, in the, in, in, in the person of the poor and suffering. You, you get that. Yeah. Jesus says, what's going to determine if you're a sheep or a goat is by what you did for me. Because if you did it to the least of these, you've done it to me. This is something we overlook here. Right. It does matter. See, Jesus is saying, you know, it, it's so much more than the letter of the law. It's about living the law out in you. The, the Ten Commandments, the first four about loving God. Mm-hmm. In the in the in the life six uh, life life six are about loving mankind, yeah. and he said it's just so important. If you really got Jesus in your heart, you're gonna you're gonna do it to the least of these. You're gonna you're gonna do it to me through doing it to them. 
is what he says. So in that day, Christ does not present before men the great work he has done for them in giving his life for their redemption. Notice he, that in that day, that's not what he's talking about here. He presents the, the faithful work they've done for him. This is what's going to prove the world. Now, this is a different flip, a different flip on this. This is what's going to prove to the onlooking world, to like Satan, for example, who said, no, it's not fair that you saved Shirley and, and Mary Lee and Rick. But, but by, by the very acts of being the hands and feet of Jesus, we're going to prove to the onlooking world that, that, that there's something different about us, that we care about other people. That, and so when we do it to the least of these, we're really doing it to Jesus. So uh, I think we're, we're running out of time. And uh, this has been an incredible study. I've got one more wrap-up thought that I want to kind of leave us with. But I always like to be fair and give any one of you a wrap-up thought. If you would like to share anything about anything that we've been talking about tonight, uh, you go ahead and do it. Uh, and including, you know, if you got something you want to tell your husbands, you know, that... Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, friends, I want you all to know something. It took a lot of courage for these ladies to get up and share what they've shared tonight. It might not be as easy as what you think to get up in front of a, a camera. It's easier for me to talk to a group of people than it is a camera. But I, 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 I told them that, uh, that, that what you needed to hear was their testimonies because they're so sincere and they really do love the Lord. And I said, we're not looking for theologians here. We're just looking for life principles. You know that that work in life, and and these two ladies, they they reflect it. They do. So, any final thoughts or comments or anything that you'd like to share? Uh, I think I want to. There's a text here in First Peter six seven. Okay, First Peter. Or maybe it's First Peter. Five. I'm sorry. First Peter, First Peter five, five, six and seven. Okay. Uh, it's so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and in His good time He will honor you. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about what happens to you. And I, I feel like when you're giving, sometimes you do have to humble yourself. You gotta humble. Yeah, humble. It's it's not easy to always to give and to reach out. And I feel like if you humble yourself. And do it with God's mighty power. Uh, I think He will honor that. I think that speaks well, yeah. and that's good for me. Absolutely, as a final. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's uh, what touches people's life. I think probably more than anything is when they see a a selfless life being lived out. I know I'm more impressed by that. When I see somebody that's actually making a sacrifice, yeah. you know, I, I know they're busy. I know what touched my heart probably more than any other thing and probably the reason that I'm right here right now is um, these guys offered to study the Bible with me. Yeah. And, and uh, Shirley, you, you knew Dave mm -hmm. uh, and, and everything. He, what he did... It, him and these other guys, they they were uh, one of them was a doctor, and one of them, uh, they, they, the other two did anesthesia at the hospital and everything. They were professionals, yet they sacrificed their time to 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 to, to drive all the way down to my house. They they did that. They would sacrifice their time to do that. And I said, "What are they doing? What are they doing this for me? What do they want?" At first, I was thinking, "What do they want?" You know, but they were just giving their life and, and that touched my life so much. Yeah. And that's who God is. Yeah. He's a giving God for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave it all. And so if we represent Jesus Christ here on this earth, we're going to do the same thing. Now, um, in my wrap up thought here, uh, a lot of, I've heard a lot of people say, as a matter of fact, Cindy and I are planning a trip to Israel with some very good friends of ours. Mm -hmm. And we're really looking forward to Larry Meyer. Uh, very dear friends of ours, and we're looking forward to that, and and uh, and maybe a couple other people. Uh, I don't have permission to give everybody's name, but we're thinking about doing that. But we're wanting to go and walk where Jesus walked at. And I've talked yeah. to people, saying, you know, wouldn't it be nice to? Uh, and they would say, wouldn't it be nice to, to to walk on this earth where when Jesus walked? I mean, that would have had to have been so uplifting, or you know, to 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 go to the to the to the to the to the person that's hurting. And, and 
in reality, we can still do that. You know, we can still do that. We can still go visit the sick. We can carry food to the, to those that have lost loved ones. Uh, we we can we can cut hair for somebody that can't afford it. Yep. You know, and do a, do a nice helping deed in that. There's so many ways that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus right now. We don't we don't have to wish that we could could have walked with Jesus two thousand years mm-hmm. ago. We can actually walk with Jesus now because He's promised us that that wherever we go, He's going to go with us. So that's yeah. that's such good news. So, um, well, we'd like to finish up here with some time of prayer. Uh, there's there's um, with this this same God that that walked the earth and wants to walk with us now cares about everything going on in our life. One of the most important things that we can do is we can pray for others. We can pray. There's a lot of people hurting out there. We know. Hopefully, COVID is kind of. It's kind of slowing down a little bit, but there's still so much pain, sickness, hurting. A very dear friend of mine, uh, friends of mine, lost their their mom this morning. Uh, uh, Francis Miller uh, passed away this morning, and and so there's other people out there that's hurting, and and we need to keep them lifted up. And uh, we know that the, we uh, Shirley, you you are you work with the healthcare industry. They're still needing all the prayers they can get right now. I'm sure, aren't they? Yes. It's caused so much chaos and uh, in in the healthcare industry. And so we need to keep those in healthcare lifted up. We need to keep the teachers and the students and everything lifted up. I got a prayer request here. Uh, oh my goodness, Mary Ella. Mary Ella, I want to give you a big hug right now. Mary Ella, during COVID, she comes to me and she says, I want to give you a big uh, air hug, is what she would say. <laughs> Mary, air hug. But, uh, Mary Ella has lost her, her, her dog, uh, it, lost her dog tonight, and she is heartbroken. Mm-hmm. And so we need to lift up Mary Ella. Mary Ella, we love you, and, and Jesus is going to give you a big air hug, okay? And so... Um, any other prayer concerns that anybody can think of that we can lift up to the Lord in prayer? Not in particular. Okay. Um, all right. What we'll do is let's go to the Lord in prayer and um, and just know that He cares about us and, and, and ask Him how we can be His hands and feet. Join me, please. Father in heaven, we thank You for loving us so much that You gave all to, to us. And we thank you, dear God, that, that, that we can have the privilege and the honor of being your hands and feet, uh, that, that we, can, that we can, can be used by you as vessels to love those around us. So I want to pray for everyone that's, that's out there watching right now. And, um, and I thank you for these two ladies that courageously got up here tonight and shared, uh, Lord, that you would bless us all, Lord, with opportunities to be your hands and feet. Lay people on our heart that we can call or we can go by and visit or that we can, that we can just sh- give an encouraging word. Um, just give us opportunities to be that witness of your love and your faithfulness so that we can let the whole world know that there's a God that loves us and a God that cares about us. That you would be with the hurting. We, we want to pray for Mary Ella right now, a very mm-hmm. precious child of yours. What a sweet person. She's got the sweetest smile and uh, Lord, right now she's hurting. And so I know you're, you're able to do this. You're able to pick her up right now. And you're able to give her a big air hug right now, Lord, because you love her and care about her. And I thank you for doing that. Um, we've got other people that are hurting right now. We know of them. We just pray that, that you would give them that peace and that hope that you'd place your hand on them right now. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for being so loving. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Friends, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We want you to know that Jesus loves you and he cares about you and he needs you to be his hands and feet to a hurting world out there. It's high time we get the, give the world a true picture of who God really is, a loving God and a Amen. caring God. God bless you and bye-bye.